The search for a mathematical understanding of motion began in ancient times and reached a high point with the discoveries of Galileo and Newton. These efforts brought forth a flood of mathematical development. The most celebrated, of course, is the calculus, but far from the least important is the subject of vectors. Studying the motion of a particle, we take note of its position at successive intervals. The particle's position is observed twice. First, at an initial position, and second, at a final position. This data is indicated by an arrow with its tail at the initial position and its head at the final position. This can be done for any two positions. Initial position, final position. Initial position, final position. Initial position, final position. The length and direction of the arrow describe the change of position. The change of position is called the displacement of the particle. When the final position coincides with the initial position, we say that the displacement has zero length. The arrow has zero length. No specific direction is assigned to it. Arrows with the same length, but different directions, describe different displacements. Arrows with different lengths but the same direction also describe different displacements. However, arrows with the same length and the same direction describe the same displacement. They may have different tails and different heads, but they describe the same change of position the same displacement. Equivalent arrows, equivalent arrows, equivalent arrows. An arrow identifies a set consisting of all arrows equivalent to it. In this set, any arrow is equivalent to any other. They all describe the same displacement. Such a set of equivalent arrows will be called a vector. A vector is determined by any of its arrows. Any one of them may be used to represent the entire set.
the set of all arrows of zero length will be called the zero vector. observations of a particle give three displacements, suggesting a definition for the addition of two vectors. Given vectors A and B, we choose a representative of each so that the tail of the second is at the head of the first. The arrow from the tail of the first to the head of the second represents the sum, vector A plus B. Applying this definition to find B plus A, we see that any representative of B plus A is equivalent to any representative of A plus B. Therefore, addition of vectors is commutative. The sum A plus B equals the sum B plus A for all vectors A and B. The procedure for addition applies even if one or both of the vectors is the zero vector. It follows that A plus the zero vector equals A for any vector A. The definition of addition tells us how to add two vectors. If three vectors are given, we may first find A plus B and then add C. Or we may add B plus C to A obtaining the same sum. This is the associative law for vector addition.
Associativity permits us to simplify the notation by deleting parentheses. Commutativity states that the sum is the same in any order. The sum of any number of vectors can be obtained by placing representatives head to tail. The arrow from the tail of the first to the head of the last represents the sum. It may happen that the head of the last coincides with the tail of the first. In this case, the sum is the zero vector. In particular, the sum of two vectors may be the zero vector. This occurs when the two vectors have equal lengths but opposite directions. We then call B the negative of A and A the negative of B. Any vector plus its negative is the zero vector. The algebraic properties of vectors with respect to addition are those of a commutative group. The sum of two vectors is a uniquely defined vector Addition is associative. There is a zero. Inverses exist. Addition is commutative. This commutative group is the beginning of vector algebra, which was developed originally to solve problems in mechanics, but now has a wide variety of applications. 